I'm going to show you an AI tool that I think is really interesting. Plus it's user friendly. That means that if you're not a developer, like I'm not, well, we're able to build these AI models with this system. It's called Cognito Flow, and I'm going to show you how on this video. Cognito Flow comes with several templates available that we can start using right away. But the true power of Cognito Flow is actually creating our own experiment. Before we jump into this, let me show you the deal that's going on right now. It starts off at $79 for the lifetime deal. So that means that you pay once and use it forever. Plus, there's a 60 day money back guarantee in case you don't like it. So grab it with confidence, try testing it out. And if you like it, keep it. And if not, you have 60 days to return it. Now, the deal starts off at $79 for a license tier one. And this is what you're going to get. So 15,000 predictions per month. That means that the, you can feed this 15,000 times and get results. You get 50 training hours per month. The training hours are really interesting because when we build one of our own experiments, it's going to start using this training to understand what you want to actually do with the system. So if we want to build a system to give us results for an image, well, once it learns what we want to give it, it's going to take time to actually build it. So we get 50 hours of training hours per month, five users and unlimited trainings per month. So we can set this unlimited times to train bots, but well, not bots, AI models, but it's only 50 hours per month. So consider that. If you need more hours, more, more training, more predictions, etc., jump into license tier two. And starting from license tier three, there's the active learning. So what does that mean? Well, we build our AI model, we feed it, and we train it, and that's it. But if you have the active learning, that means that when you start using this AI model with the images that you're feeding, we can go ahead and retrain it again with the images fed. We can tell it that these images are true, these are false, or these text is correct, this, this is incorrect, and it keeps on learning. So it's an active learning system. And it goes all the way up to tier five, which gives you more systems, okay? Now, let's check out Cognito Flow. So this is my Cognito Flow, and like I said, it comes with public experiments that you can start using right away. So these are divided in, in text. For example, emotion detection in text. So if we wanna, use this for something that's interesting for us, like detection of emotion, you can use it. Detect toxic language, extract information from text, identify, etc. We can use all of these right now, translations and all that. The images, for example, extraction of text from image to text, Spanish and English, that's available right now. The identify objects in the image, so it'll tell you what's inside of the image, and electroceptor classification in weekly electric fish. So these are built already, we can start using them. And there's also the audio. So cheat the AI, identify sounds. So if a dog is barking there, it'll identify it. Uh, spoken language, both uh, text, so that's text, um, speech to text, but in Spanish and English. So it has both of these. And those are available and we can start using them right away. Let me show you how to create an actual experiment for your own, because this is where the true power relies on Cognito Flow. So there's the image base, text base, and the audio. Let's go into the image based, and we're gonna use image classification and object detection. So you have two options here to work with. In this case, we'll add image classification. So that means that if we fit it in the image, it's gonna give us a result. We're gonna name this, for example, two more detection. So it even works with this. I'll go to next step. And this is where we're going to add our images. Now, download the example file because that's going to help you load in your own images so you understand how to load in the file. In this case, I already have a file for this and I have a training binary. And let me show you what images are inside of that. So in the training binary, let me open that. There we go, it's open this folder and there's images with no tumor, for example. I mean, I think this is pretty interesting. And there's images with tumor, okay? So I'm telling it, these are the ones with tumors and these ones are with not. So we're telling the AI model to learn about this. So when we actually feed it an image, it gives us a result that we understand and it tells it, yes, it does have a tumor or not. So, I mean, pretty powerful stuff, right? So we can add the training system there and we can go into the advanced options to add our validation data set. So if you have validation data set, we can add it here. In this case, I already have one for the model that I have and we're going to update it there. Wait for that to load and we'll go into the next step. Okay, there we go. Let's go into next step. And here we go, configuration. By default, it's recommended that you keep these settings, but we're able to tweak these if we like. Now, how do these work? For example, we have the processing. These are random images that are gonna be 
transform into these to get more results. So for example, each one of the images that we had in those folders, it's going to random rotation and it's going to be one of the variables, vertical flips, random zoom, horizontal flip, etc. Why is this important? Because let's just say that we're uploading the brain tumor. If we just set upright the tumor, it's the AI system is going to think that it always has to be upright in, in case of the brain, right? So, but if we do all these random processings, we can upload the image any way we want, horizontal, vertical, etc., and it's still going to detect it because we processed all these random variables. Then we have the vectorizer. This is the neural engine that's going to have the power of the AI. By default, these two are the ones selected. Why? Because it's like a mix of good system and not so much of a workload. This is important because this is going to raise the work hours it's going to take to train. Remember, on the deal page, there's a 15 training hours if you graph license tier one. So if we tick all of these on, it's going to take longer to train the system because it's using more neural, system, more neural AI systems to actually do it. If this is really important, go ahead and tick them all on. But if not, these two work really well. But if it's a really important thing, I think you should enable these. For example, if we're going to work with something so important like a brain tumor, I think I would vectorize all of this. The classifiers, again, other systems to tweak these, and the metric optimizer. There we go. So if you have this correct, we can go ahead and create and run. It's going to start experimenting and running. So this is going to take my training hours because it's going to start using them to detect this. Now, I already ran one of these flows in the AI image, my experiments, tumor detection. This was the one that I've just created and one that I created four hours ago. All right, so I'm going to open this up and you can actually test these before you actually run it. So for example, this is a system that's built already and we're going to use this model so we can test it. So in this model, we're able to upload an image so we can do a manual test. So in this case, I'll grab this image and I'll go ahead and open it up and it's going to run the AI model to tell us if it has a tumor or not. So in this case, we got a result. I think this is a tumor. So it does have a tumor. And yes, I searched in Google for one of these images that does have does have a tumor. And I've been testing this over and over and I do get correct results. I'm guessing that it won't be too specific when we upload an image that has like a really tiny tumor that only a doctor would actually view this. I mean, I wouldn't use this for something in real life situation, but this is how it works. We're going to get a result. So it's going to be tumor or no tumor because that's the AI model that we build. Now, what do we do with all of this? Okay, I built it, I like it, and now I need to use it. Well, we go into integrations. In these integrations, once you know it's working correctly with your test and all that, we can add the API system to our mobile apps, our website, a form builder, and this will work with something like Public Connect, which has the API system, and we can use that for building something like this. We have JavaScript, curl, Python, nodes, and C hash. There we go. So we have all those systems available to integrate it into another system. Now let's go back into the other experiments here that there's available because that's the, the beauty of this. Create a new experiment. Remember on the images, we have these two type of systems, image classification, where it tells us a result, object detection, which is going to detect something inside of the image. Let me grab something really quickly so I can upload it and show you that in one of the models that are built already. So let me close this images and we're going to go into public experiments and we're going to do identify objects and image. Okay. Let me use this and we're going to test it out. Okay. So I'm going to grab this image with some kids playing there and let's go ahead and test this. And there we go. It detected people inside of this. So three found in this system. So this is a really quick system to identify what's inside of the image. Now you can use this in an AI model on an application where if you upload an image, it's going to detect it for you. Or if you need to filter out certain images to get results, I mean, it's just going to depend how you want to use all these systems. Now there's more of these systems available. For example, on the, let's go into public experiment. For the text one, for example, detect toxic language. So if we upload some text, if we add a form, or if we integrate this with Excel, which has an add-on, well, we can use all of this. If I want to paste in text right here just for testing, I can do so right now. This was for, I forgot what I selected, detect toxic language. So I, uh, I hate this system a lot. Okay, let's test this. And it's toxic. 
See, it just detected it. So you can use this, for example, in a review system where, where you're receiving reviews and you add this system to once you receive that review to analyze it with Cognito Flow AI API system and give us a result. So if it's a toxic message, we'll get an alert, just something like that. You know, it depends what you want to use it for. And there's a lot of things that we can do with this. And create experiments, if it's gonna be text-based, we have these options, text classification, knowledge base for questions answering. So if you're gonna get certain questions that are repeated, you can use this for your bot for responding, your chat bot, your frequently asked questions in an email or, or whatever. For example, if they're asking for the same repeated question uh, repeatedly, well, you have an AI system that's going to answer that. Audio based, so you upload here the experiment. For example, I'll say test, go next, and we're gonna add our files right here. You download the example, and you work from there. So this is the example where we're gonna add our files. So we use this, for example, dark bark, rain, sea waves, and we would add folders to this to different types of sounds, like a bell, like a screwdriver, or whatever type of sounds, a car, whatever, and we're gonna get those results for this. When, it, when you upload a file to read what it has, the audio base is gonna tell us what it is. But man, that is incognito mode. I think it's pretty impressive the way that we can build these really easily and start using it on our own systems. Now, if you are not in the part of the API system, well, take the time to build the actual system and have someone do the API connection. That's what I would recommend because this is the most time consuming part of it. Building this, the API system is a breeze for a developer, okay? And this is the deal that's going on right now. You might not want to miss on it because it's in a lifetime deal. If you think it's worth getting, do consider using the link in the description because it helps me out with a small commission and it won't cost you a single cent more. I thank you all for watching and I'll see you on my next videos.